Good evening, everyone. My name is Frank Proudfoot, and I am the Assistant Principal of the Arts at Brooklyn High School of the Arts. Tonight, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our Spring Arts Showcase. Uh, this is a very special event for us, especially this year, because uh, this is our 20-year anniversary. 20 years of excellence in arts and in academics. And we couldn't do that without the amazing community around us, uh, starting with our principal, Principal Vecciano, who is such a tremendous leader, as well as our administrative staff, our teachers, our support staff, our parents, and of course, our students. Thank you to you all for making it possible for us to become such a wonderful, wonderful arts community. Now, uh, in, over the last two nights, as well as into next week, we have more amazing um, showcases coming for you in all of our studios, so I hope you'll jump onto YouTube and check them out. Tonight, we have some featured monologues from our juniors and our seniors, so uh, kick back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. But maybe this is a sign Telling me it's my time To get up and fight No other way is gonna be right Take you back home Effles and bitters from Rome Rally the truth, baby And take you back home My name is India Sullivan Today I will be performing the monologue called When the Cooking is Done by Joseph Arnold in the character of Marza Enjoy It's the most extraordinary time that I've ever spent alone. It's real, unreal, like I had stepped into a new world altogether. I was so mad because last minute he tells me he can't go. I was so angry. This was something that we had planned months in ahead, in advance. Three hours time together, max. And he blames work, always. I had enough, I, I finally had enough. I was all ready to go, so I left as soon as I hung up the phone with him. I was so mad, I, I couldn't believe it. So I left the house in such a rage, I don't even think that I, closed or locked the front door I think I did <laughs> you just said something I had reached a train and something like took over me like I felt different free like I had stepped out of the shadows I don't know I was uplifted I had felt the spirit of the train the energy it was such energy and I reached to play the theater and I watched the play only half though at intermissions I left and it wasn't because it was boring but it was because it was the greatest play that I, I've ever seen and I wanted to imagine the ending and I, I didn't want it to be spoiled so instead I, I walked into the night over the bridge back again over a bridge back again and i imagine these people the the daughter the the um sisters the wife the husband these people i somehow knew i knew these people intimately closely i can think their thoughts live their lives and i wanted them to be happy to to be brave to love and then it occurred to me That if I can invent the outcome of all these people in the play, then I have the power to invent my life the way that I wanted it to be lived. And I, I couldn't stop thinking. And I began to understand that there were things in my life that I wanted to change. Things about myself. Like what I do with my time and what mattered most in my play. My life. Our lives. They're like theater, aren't they? We write our own narratives. 
And if there's something wrong with the narrative, we change it. But we must be strong enough to change it. So I decided over the last few days that I'm going to change my story. I'm going to do things that I only wished to do. And I don't care what anyone has to say or think. Oh, hi. It's 2.15. Oh, where am I going? Well, I'm going to catch a train to Los Angeles. Why am I going by myself? Well, I'm going to chase my dreams of being an actress. Yes, I know that's a very hard task to accomplish, but I got my head on right. My ultimate goal is to make it on the big screen, main character, the main actress, the star of the show. Oh, okay, bye. Hi, sir. The train said it would be here at two and I gotta get going. Delayed? No, 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 it can't be delayed. I got somewhere I need to be, I need to make it to Los Angeles. I'm trying to chase my dreams. Big actress, big character, big star, star of the show. <sighs> okay, I understand there's nothing that you can do. Hi, my name is Sierra Lundgren and for my Genius Showcase project, I will be performing a monologue from the, pl from the film, sorry, for Colored Girls, written by Tyler Perry in the role of Juanita Sin. Ever since I realized there was someone called a colored girl or an evil woman, I've been trying not to be that and leave bitterness to somebody else's cup. Come to somebody to love me without deep and nasty smelling scars from lie or being left screaming in the street of lunatics whispering. I don't have any of that for you. I bought you with joy I found and I found joy. And then there's that woman who hurt you and who you left three or four times and then you went back after you put my heart in the bottom of your shoe. You just walked back to where you hurt and I had nothing. So I went somewhere where they had something for me. But none of them were you. I got a real dead loving for you now. I don't know anymore how to avoid my own face wet with my tears because I convinced myself that colored girls have no right to sorrow. I lived for you. I know I did it for myself, but I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand being sorry and colored at the same time. It's so redundant in the modern world. Thank you. Hi, my name is Grace Congoy, and this is my final junior project. It is a little monologue from a script that I'm working on, so. Well, what I'm going through is an amateur self-actualization. As I move on from my first experimentation of being truly wild, I am capable of repressing whoever I am and became gritty and almost unremorseful. I didn't think, who knew I could actually do it, but my infatuation for the romance of a life so intense that you can't even bear that i can't even bear was stronger than any doubt don't be a tragic hero simone i told him well 
maybe one day. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, these are all pieces that I wrote myself. I really hope that you enjoy it. I had a lot of fun um, putting everything together and writing it and performing it. Um, if I do offend anybody, I sincerely apologize. It's really not to hurt anybody or offend somebody, someone. Um, I know some people may agree, some people won't agree. This is just written from my view and also from what I've heard and I just combined it all together. And again, I hope that you guys enjoy. Thank you. Sorry that I don't fit into the marginalized, stereotypical misrepresentation of what you think black hair is. In your eyes, that hair is nappy can never be long so we use wigs and weaves to fit into your world according to you the european standards that are constantly putting down black girls and our hair is what you all are surviving off of however the wigs the weaves and the braids are classified as ghetto and ratchet but that isn't at all what it is it is our protective hairstyle that can be changed every day according to our mood and what we wear. We are creative, we're beautiful. And obviously you see that because cultural appropriation is a thing, but it's okay. You can hop on our wave because our culture is everything. But remember what you said, it's ghetto and ratchet. We are still in slavery but we're just mentally enslaved. Our homes were taken, our country was taken, and now our culture. But the funny thing is, is that you all always wanted it. That's the thing, you take, you revamp, but you don't know at all what it is. But just know, this hair and what we created can never be taken. Society. What is it to you? Is it positive and supportive or is it just the source of all evil? Well, to me, it's the source of all evil. It's what constantly tries to tear the black community down. Black girls have been put down for centuries. If you're dark, you're ugly and mean. If you're light, you're attractive and cocky. This sick mentality that society has engraved on our ancestors still continues till this day. However, now it is within our own black community. Instead of uplifting both, we continue to uplift one. I once heard somebody say, you're not pretty, you're just light. Us tearing each other down isn't helping us. There are so many things and so many groups of people who are already against us. We need to come together instead of tearing each other down. Because at the end of the day, light, dark, medium, we are all black. We have melanin running through our veins and it is gorgeous. Instead of tearing each other down, let's come together because we're stronger together. You think you understand the struggles of a black girl in America, but you don't. Our mothers, our grandmothers, our ancestors, we're constantly viewed as an angry black woman. 
Now you see that little smile and laugh and, and nod. All to avoid the stereotype. We're scared to let out emotion because we don't want to be viewed as angry or ghetto. We can build years of a reputation and that can all go down the drain when letting out some emotion. This stereotype is what silences black girls and black women, causing them to hold it in. But when it stacks up, we explode. The one silenced black girl is ripping off her tape because it's time her story is told. Corona, and I will be playing Augusta. I am Dara Sanchez, and I will be playing Prudence. And the name of this playwright is Underground Confessions. When she was younger. Destroy. Not anymore. God forgive me. Destroy. I know. You should only live by our model. Embrace your age. Embrace your age. Just embrace your age. The model grandma. everybody needs to live by. Embrace your age, people. Embrace your age, you young people here. Sorry. Oh. Prudence. Oh, my. Oh, my. We're grandmas. What is she thinking? What that that woman's never gonna change. Never she gonna never change. will. Now that the you know the, the the fellas ain't barking up her tree, now she's just doing all this stuff, all this stuff to her face. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I remember way back when, right after Paul died, immediately, immediately, she decides to shack up with the mechanic. We all knew she was sleeping around with that guy, but at least, wait a, at least a month or two after your husband, his, his body's still warm. Yeah. May he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. Now, Paul, I tell you, that Paul I did not have a chance with that woman. At all. Couldn't run away quicker. Throw him to his death. Weekend, uh, yeah, actually, uh, Sophie's coming down with the kids. Oh, Sophie, yeah. I love Sophie, warms yeah. my heart. My little girl, I know. She's gonna, I told her to come down so we can go over to my sister's at Moon mm -hmm. Island with the pool. Mm -hmm. With the pool, mm -hmm. I know what you want. Yeah, are the kids going? 
Yeah, yeah, like coming down. Her husband, he has to do some work retreat, so I told her, you just come down. Makes sense. And my cousin, you know, my cousin's gonna be there. She makes some really nice margaritas. Uh, you know we love us some margaritas. Yeah, I love some margaritas. I heard that it was gonna be 90 degrees. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. The kids are gonna go crazy. The kids are gonna love it. They're gonna go crazy. James. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Going back to Margaret. I got a, heard a little rumor while I was playing bingo the other day. So it turns out, Paul was going to leave her right before the car crash. Yeah. Turns out he was uh, seeing some young lady over planning on uh, running away with her or something like that. Yep, Freddie was in love with this other woman. Yep. <laughs> oh, I remember, you know, my memory. Yeah, really good. March 2017, three days before he died. I bump into him in the jewelry store, you know, the one that was in the, the corner, right across the other deli? Mm. Buys this beautiful ring, smiling ear to ear, happy as a clam, walking out with his little bag. Never seen him so happy. Never seen him so happy. You know why I remember that day? Why do you remember that day? That's the same day you and I had lunch. Our weekly lunches. Of connecting pieces, huh, Prudence? Yeah. You bought this uh, tie for Frank, was it? Beautiful red tie. What a nice tie. I remember the tie because it was a coincidence that the day of Paul's funeral, he was also wearing a red tie. It looked a lot like that tie. It must have been a sale or something, right? Right, Augusta? How long have you known for you? Honey. I've been trying to get out of you for years. I noticed the day of the funeral, actually. Everybody was grieving, but I knew it was, it hit you different, it hit you harder. He's wearing your tie, you're wearing his ring. You know what the crazy part is? The day after he died was our three year anniversary. Three year? Why did you ever come to me? Gossip too much. Honey, I didn't know I gossip, but I gossip about everybody else. Not us. I was gonna leave Frank for him. It was serious, Prudence. I'm so sorry, honey. I know. He was a good man. I know he was. May he rest in peace. Rest in peace with Frank. Frank, I mean, you wasn't a bad guy either, but I you know you weren't not as, not as good. This is my stop, honey, okay? Call me later? Yes, I will. You were opening up to me. We took you up, what, 40 years? 40 years too long. Better late than never, you know? Yeah, true. Better late than never. Right, the door's about to close on me. Let me get out. Oh, you're Cain. Oh, honey, what would I do without you? Please don't fall like last time. Oh, Lord. I'll see you in bingo. All right, see you next Saturday. Hi, my name is Niles E. Mill. I'll be doing a monologue from the last days of Judas Iscariot by Stephen Adley Gurgis.
portraying the role of St. Peter. My name is Peter. They got a basilica named after me in Rome, which is kind of ironic because back in the day, if you would have ever said the word Rome in my presence, more than likely, I'd be chewing my stick. I even had a standing rule on my boat. Talk about Rome, and your ass can swim home alone. I had to lay down these rules strong, because my younger brother Drew and his friends always talking about overthrowing Rome and the coming of the Messiah. And I'm like, look, fellas, unless your Messiah is going to come down and help us catch some fish, then you need to shut the heck up and put your undivided focus on these damn nets. Then one day, Drew didn't show up for work, and he come running up to me at the end of the day, talking about, this is Jesus, bro. He's the Messiah. I ain't fishing no more. And I'm like, this Jesus, who resembled a messiah as much as I resembled a ballerina in a tutu, strides on up to me and says, Catch any fish today? And I'm like, no, I didn't catch any fish today. He says, yeah, go out to the sea and you're going to catch some fish. And so I listened to Jesus and took him on the boat with me, intending to throw his ass overboard. And then he says, Cash your net wide and deep. And so I did. <laughs> and well, look, I'm a damn professional commercial fisherman. No one, and I mean no one, knew the sea and the tides better than me. And there were no fish in the sea. And that's because they were all in my net. And then Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. And what I didn't know then is that I would never See the sea again. Hi, my name is Niles Emil. I'll be doing a monologue from Fences by August Wilson, portraying the role of Corey. I live here too. I ain't scared of you. I was walking by you to go in the house when I see you sitting on the steps, drunk, singing to yourself. I ain't have to say excuse me to you. You don't count around anymore. Now why don't you get out of my way talking about what you gave me, what you done for me. You ain't never done nothing for me but hold me back afraid I was gonna be better than you. All you ever done was try and make me scared of you. I used to triple every single time I heard you call my name. Every time I heard your footsteps in the house, wondering all the time, what was Papa going to say if I do this? What's he going to say if I do that? What's he going to say if I turn on the damn radio? And Mama, she's afraid of you too. I don't know how she can stand you after what you've done to her. What you going to do, give me a whooping? You can't whoop me no more. You're too old. Yeah, you're an old man. You're a crazy old man talking about I got the devil in me. Come on, put me out. Come on, put me out. What's the matter? You so bad? Come on, put me out. Come on, put me out. Hi, my name is Tian Watson. I'll be performing two monologues. The first from Skeleton Crew, written by Dominique Maruso in the role of Faye, and the second from King John, written by William Shakespeare in the role of Arthur. If Reggie found out what? Reggie ain't finding out nothing. Reggie ain't finding out about my clothes laying around or me being here when y'all arrived this morning. Reggie ain't finding out about me gambling on the premises. And Reggie ain't finding out about that gun you keep in your locker. Right? Reggie ain't finding out nothing. I know everything about this place, Des. The walls talk to me. The dust in the floor write me messages. I'm in the fence. I'm on the bulletin board. I'm in the chipped paint. Can't nobody slip nothing past me up in here. I see through those lockers. I know what you got in that bag you bring up in here every day. But I don't expose it. Everybody got their own bag of shit. 
You got yours. I got mine. Leave me to my own stink and don't go trying to expose it. Worry about that car that need fixing. Worry about that darkness that makes you too scared to coast without that metal. Don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. Have you the heart? When your head did but ache, I knit my handkerchief about your brow the best that I had. A princess brought it to me and I never did ask it of you again. And when my hands held your head at midnight like the watchful minutes to the hour still and anon, cheering up the heavy time saying, what lack you and where lies your grief? Many a poor man's son would have lien still and I've never have spoken a loving word to you, but you, at your sick service, had a prince. Nay, you may think my love was crafty love and call it cunning. Do. And if you will, if heaven be pleased to see me ill, well, then you must. But... Will you put out my eyes? These eyes that never did, nor never shall so much as frown upon you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maylin Smith. And for my senior project, I will be performing two monologues that I've worked on in the past in my high school years that I feel like shows my strengths, my abilities, and how far I've come. My first monologue will be from my first play ever, which was Is He Dead? and I will be performing as Marie. My second monologue will be from the play Cowboy Mount, and I will be performing as the character Cavalli. I hope you enjoy. You remind me of him in oh so many ways. You look like him, you act like him, you even have his dear voice, but you even look like him. Mm, well, Francois is more graceful, but in women's clothes, I don't think he would have been. I don't think he would have kicked his skirt around the way that you do sometimes. Still, he might have, because he was an impetuous creature. These three months, it's almost as if I've been with him. You're so neat. You're such a neat guy. I wish I would have known you when I was little. Nah, real little, but at the age when you started to find stuff out, when I was cracking rocks apart and looking at the sparkles inside, when I first put my finger inside me and felt wonderment. <laughs> I would've taken you to this real neat hut that I had where I made a waterfall out of times and shit in my own hut. We could've took all our clothes off. I'd look at your dinger and you could show me how far you could piss. <sighs> People were always giving me shit. I bet you would've protected me. But you know what? Once I was in a play and I was real glad to be in a play because I thought they were just for pretty people. And I had this dumb eye patch and these metal plate shoes to crack my duck foot. It was the ugly duckling. And I got to be the ugly duckling. And I had to wear this old tattered black cloth. And I had to kneel down on the stage and people would throw shit at me. But I didn't mind because at the end, I get to be the pretty swan. But you know what they did, Slim? At the end of the play, they had this real pretty Valerie and Kathy rise up like the fucking North Star as the swan. I didn't even get to be the swan. And all the parents were talking about how pretty she was and how nice she looked. It was real shitty, man. I just, I wish I would have known you when I was little. 
I bet you would have protected me. Hello, my name is Sean Sonny Jr. and I'll be doing a monologue from Choir Boy by Terrell Alvin McCraney. I do. It's like, every time I turn around, there's something I've done or undone that has me called into question. I think I'm doing right, but clearly my instincts are wrong because I'm what? Not on my knees thanking the Lord for Drew at every second? I'm grateful, headmaster I am, but should I be more humble or what? Groffling, right? Thank Drew for allowing me to live alongside these good other strapping, mean behind boys who don't have no problem displaying all kinds of bad behavior and ill will towards me. But if I remove myself from their presence just so that I could think long enough without having someone drawing attention to my swish or my wrist, I'm the one who needs to be put down or put out. <sighs> Something about the way that I'm standing. When can I show up, do my job, and everyone applaud? Is that allowed at Drew? Is there anybody looking out for me? And for my next piece, I'll be doing a monologue from Fat Cat Killers by Adam Sinclair. Sorry about that. It's just, you were scaring me a little and you're not supposed to do that. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I thought maybe we'd knock on your door and be like, hey, we just got laid off from your company and can't find jobs, but you got a lot of money, right? And you feel bad and say something like, hold on a minute, boys, and come on in, boys, and would you like a drink? And we would go into your save, you'd fill a couple bags full of cash, one for each of us, and we'd hang out and watch TV and say thank you when we left. I really wish it could have been like that. But Michael thinks, and I guess I agree, that people only give away money under duress. Or at least they like you anyway. But you definitely wouldn't have given it to two former employees who just showed up to your door. Even though your company was literally built on our backs. And we worked all that time for not much money. Just thinking about it makes me want to hit you. I guess it's okay, right? I mean, is there a reason not to hit you? Yeah, I can't understand anything you say with the gag on. Maybe I should break something. Like a finger or something. Or I could cut something off. Like your ears or your nose. <laughs> I wonder if there's a knife around here. You didn't see a knife around here, did you? Never mind, I can't understand anything you say. Tell you what, how about I hit you and if it makes me feel good, I'll hit you some more and maybe go find a knife. But if it makes me feel worse, I'll stop. Deal? Hi, I'm Ashley Nelson. I'll be performing a monologue from the play Almost 16. Dad. You will let me take the car on myself. I, yeah. I, I'm gonna be 16 in two weeks. I, yeah. Technically, my learner's permit does require you to be in a car with me. But, yeah. Technically, I have to wait two weeks to get my license. But, you know I can drive. You told me I'm better than mom. Yeah, I can three-point turn, parallel park, and, like, I observed the traffic while I was, like, it's a religion, so it's not, like, irresponsible to let me drive. Because, you know, I'm awesome at it. Oh, my God. Bro, this is so unfair. I hate you. You're gonna ruin me socially. Literally, the, the coolest girls, the coolest girls in freshman year, the ones whose parents are all probably making huge donations at mom's gala thing tonight. The ones who live in massive houses on top of the hill. And don't talk to me. They started talking to me because, because I told them I'd drive them to the dance. I was like, I can take you. And they were like, you're 16. I was like, 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were like, cool. I've been eating lunch with them every day this week. They were all so excited. It was well thought out. <sighs> you and mom were supposed to be at her benefit gala thing tonight. You were not supposed to be stuck at home with a stupid fever. If I, if I don't get in that car, if I don't get in that car and go pick them up and take them to the dance, I'm dead. Or I might as well be. They will make it their lives work to ruin me. I will be marked, mocked, and probably even shunned. My entire high school experience will become hell. I'm not being dr I'm not being dramatic. Dad. I'm being accurate, Dad. This is how things go. So I am begging you, pl please, please. Go to sleep. Just go to sleep. You got a fever, you know. Need your rest. I will be here until you wake up in exactly three hours right before mom gets back. But I am begging you, I'm begging you, please. Dad, my life literally depends on this. My name is Yannick Bundick, and I will be performing a monologue for class action in the role of Danielle. Good morning, Ms. Bundick. Um, as you know, my name is Dr. Smith, and I do understand that you really do not want to be here this morning, but, um, I think that my sessions can actually help you. I know you're frustrated, I get it. Um, just start whenever you're ready. Let it all out. Say whatever you need to say. I'm listening. That's my job. None of that seems to matter. 
because I know I will be able to handle all the problems that come along because there is someone much more important than all of them put together and she's inside of me now waiting to help me waiting to need me Look at you guys! No wonder we're dangling at the bottom of the food chain. Aw oh, man, I hate dangling. Yeah, if it wasn't for those lions, we'd be running the joint. And I hate lions. They're pushy and hairy and stinky. And man, are they? Ugly! So surely we lions aren't all that bad. <gasps> oh, Scar, it's just you. For a minute there, we were afraid it was somebody important. I see. You know, like Mufasa. Uh, now that's power. Tell me about it. I hear that name and I shudder. Mufasa. <laughs> Do it again. Mufasa. 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 I'm surrounded by idiots. Now you, Scar, you're one of us. Charmed. Ooh, I like that. He's not a king, but he's still so proper. Hey, did you bring us something to eat, Scar, old buddy, old pal? Did you? Did you? I don't think you really deserve this. I practically gift wrapped those cubs for you, and you couldn't dispose them. Oh, well, no. You were exactly alone, Scar. Yeah, baby, what's it going to do? Kill Mufasa? Precisely. Mm -hmm. I never thought hiking is essential. Crude and unspeakable dilemma. But maybe they've a glimmer of potential. If aligned to my vision. Your powers of retention are as wet as a warthog's backside. But thick as you are, pay attention! My words are a matter of pride. It's clear from your vacant expression, the lights were not all on instead. But we are talking kings in successions. Even you can't be caught unaware. So prepare for a chance of a lifetime Be prepared for sensational news A shiny mirror is tiptoeing nearer And where do we feature? Just listen to teacher I know it's unsorted, but you'll be rewarded When at last I am given my view And then justice deliciously squared Be prepared be prepared? Be prepared for what? For the death of the king. Why, is this it? No, fool. we're gonna kill him. And Simba, too. Great idea. Who needs a king? No king, no king, la 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 la. Idiots, there will be a king. But you just said- I will be king. Stick with me, and you'll never go hungry again. It's great that we'll soon be connected. Of course, with the woe, you're expected to take certain duties on board. The future is little with prizes, and though I'm the main address, the point that I must emphasize is you won't get a sniff without me! So prepare for the cool of the century. Be prepared for the magic scam. Meticulous planning, tenacity spanning, decades of denial. Give me while I'll be king on the beauty, with wretched, saluted, and see for the wonder I am. An injustice delicious.
don't have to stay here every second. You win. You saved my life. I'm not gonna try anything while I'm here. Hello? Are you even listening to me? Go home, mom. What do you think I'm gonna do? They won't even give me anything sharper than jello in here. Just leave me alone for 10 seconds so I don't have to have you staring at me all judgmentally. Come on, you spent hours lecturing me. You convinced me, life is better than death. I should choose it. I need help. Unless you're worried you didn't make your case strongly enough. Probably because there's no way to say for sure that life is better than death. Everything we yell about, we get so worked up about God and death and religion because we have no idea and there's no way to prove it one way or the other. You think you saved me? But that's just because it's what everyone says we should think. Some cultures worship death. Some sacrifice girls just like me and it was supposed to be the best thing in the world. It made their God super happy. Maybe if I died, it would make our God happy. There's just no way to tell. You can look at me like that all you want. It's society making you think this way, mom. You don't think about anything you do. You just do it because everyone else does it. Don't say you love me. Don't say you miss me. Everything is falling. We're all falling and pretending like we're not gonna hit the ground. But we are. All you wanna do is prolong that fall. But that doesn't really help anything. Nothing does. Hi, my name is Yana Benjamin, and I'm currently a senior at Brooklyn High School of the Arts, and I'll be performing a monologue called Fade and Joy by Walter Wex. Hello, Mother Moon. It's me, Joy. Can you hear me? Hello. I know you're up there. I can see you, but you're just so far away. Why are you so far away? I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk, like how we used to. Do you remember how we used to talk? It was such fun. But what, what was it? that we used to talk about. I've forgotten. Beautiful things, I'm sure, I know. I just, I just can't quite. I just can't. <laughs> Isn't it strange how I can't remember how I even got here? I do remember it was someplace warm and dark. And water, yes, there was water, and I remember floating in the night sky. Or was it deep in the ocean? But I do remember these voices, these big, soft angel voices, and they used to tell me things, secrets even. And they used to sing such beautiful songs, <laughs> songs about... So songs songs about <sighs> I can't even remember what the songs were about I mean I try and I try but I I can't remember Mother Moon won't you answer me won't you just please whisper in my ear for just 
one more time. <laughs> Mother Moon, what have I done wrong? Why won't you answer me? Thank you guys so much for your time. Stay safe. Abby? Abs? Abby, where are you? In the garage. Abby. The garage. Hey, so listen, Tess found monkey, kitty, and giraffe, and I found one-eyed lobster, but we still can't find Dolly Doll anywhere. Here. Well, why didn't you let us know? Tess is kind of melting down. Found her, Tess. Oh, and Caleb is watching. What are you doing? I don't know, I'm just looking for something. Oh, okay. Well, I know today is Friday and they get to pick what they want to watch for TV time, but Caleb wants to watch Strike Force Pandas. The second season is available on Super Center Prime. And is that okay for Tess? It's fine, I vetted it. Well, it's a little violent, don't you think? Liz? you don't like it, then you can put on Tina Tadpole Goes Exploring. Caleb said he doesn't want to watch Tina Tadpole Goes Exploring. Can you just handle it for tonight? Huh? Can you just get everybody down for tonight for change? Oh, e yeah, sure. Hey. Are you okay? Yep. Okay, well, I think I'm going to put on Tina Tapo goes to Copenhagen because I'm just not sure about pandas. And Caleb will just have to deal. Fine. Okay. And hey, you're really a lifesaver. Thanks for finding Dolly Doll. Hey, Abby, what are you doing? I'm not. Sure. I, I came in here to find Dolly Doll. Yeah, and you found her. Thanks. Yeah. But it's... I, don't know, I just feel like something is missing. What? I don't know. What's missing? Well, where? Abby, what are you doing? What are you looking for? Hey, what can't you find? I think it's me. What? Myself, I can't find it. What? <laughs> I have no idea where it is. Okay, okay. Well, um, well, babe, it doesn't seem like it's the kind of thing you're gonna find in here. Well, this is the only place I haven't looked, okay? <laughs> Where is it? Have I lost it? I'm beginning to think that maybe you have. I mean, when's the last time you saw me? Huh? I mean, you know, when did you last see it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Think. I don't know. Okay, Liz, I need you to help me out here. Think. Okay. Well, it's been a while, I guess. Okay. A long time, actually. A long, long time since before the kids. What? Yeah, I haven't seen it since the kids, Abby. Since Caleb. <laughs> what? 
no yeah no now that I think about it this is all making sense actually I haven't really seen you since the kids okay what do you mean you haven't seen me I'm right here no you haven't I mean you're here but I never see you yes you do you've kind of disappeared on me I have not disappeared. I'm right here all the time. You're the one who's disappeared. You're the one who doesn't even seem to want to participate in this family. Excuse me? You're never here. Okay? You, you never see me because you're never here. What do you mean I'm never here? God, Abby, <laughs> maybe, maybe you work all the time. You, you, you're never, you never have to go through anything like this because... You get to do whatever you want for yourself, by yourself, whenever you want to. What do I get to do for myself, by myself? You get to get in your car and, and drive to work by yourself. Do you know what I would give to be able to drive in my car by myself anywhere? You leave me here all alone. I don't leave you. Yes, you do. And, and it's a lot for one person doing everything and giving everything. And I'm so used up by the end of every day because I've been giving and, and doing and, and giving and doing. And maybe that's what this is. Maybe I didn't lose it after all. Maybe I just gave it all away. And there's just not enough of me to go around and and now I'm all used up okay maybe that's what this is I know how hard it is what you do no you don't you have no idea okay you're right I don't but listen this is how we this is the deal we made and this is how we decided to do this this is how you wanted to do this. And you know, you don't give me much of a chance to participate in this family because you do it all. You did it all. You had them, you nursed them. And one of us had to work and that one of us was me. And so I worked and I am working so hard. What I do is hard, you know. I know. No, you don't know. I'm not always here because I'm making the money so that there is a here. Oh, don't do that. Don't pull that. I'm not doing anything. I'm just saying that I make sure there is a here so that you can take care of a here. And you're the one who's never here, you know. I'm here all the time. <laughs> For me? You're never here for me. I mean, it'd be nice, you know, if you slept in the bed with me more than once in a while, but you don't. Liz, Tess can't sleep without me right now. You know that. I know, and I'm not even upset about that because Tess needs you, Caleb needs you, and I think that's probably where what you're looking for is, with the kids, and that's where it should be. I mean, I would love for you to find yourself or whatever. I really would. But I don't think that's something you get to have right now. And I don't think that's something I get to have either. And I think that's just the way it goes. Yeah, well, right now, I don't like the way it's going very much. Well, tough, because this is how we decided to do this. Yeah, well, sometimes I hate the way we decided to do this. Well, join the club. Because sometimes the way we decided to do this makes me hate you. Oh my, oh my God, Liz, I... Wow. Oh my God. You know, sometimes... Oh my God. The way we decided to do this makes me feel pretty much the same way. So we'll call it even. 
no, no, Liz, wait, look at me. Okay. Oh my God. What? Come on, let go of me. I found it. I, I, I think I found it, Liz. Abby, can we please drop that? Please. Oh my God, Liz. There it is, right there. I found it. Okay. Here I am. And there you are. Yeah, here I am. Oh God. I have been looking in all of the wrong places. And I'm so, so sorry. I don't hate you. I know. Because I love you. I know. Okay, I love you so much. I know. We'll figure this out, right? People have been figuring this stuff out for a long time. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go do tubby time and tinkle time and book time and bedtime. No, I'll do it. Abby, no. Tomorrow. Take tonight off and do it with me tomorrow. Liz. Abby, tomorrow. All right. I'm sorry. Me too. But, um, just so you know, we've already watched Tina Tadpole goes to Copenhagen and we're up to Tina Tadpole goes to Istanbul now, so. Caleb, test, two minute warning. My name is Paris Nolden and I'm going to be performing a monologue from the play The Philanderer and the character Julia. Is it indeed too bad? What are you doing up here with that woman, you scoundrel? But now you listen to me, Leonard. You have driven me to desperation and I don't care what I do or who hears me, I'll not bear it. She shall not have my place with you. No, no, I don't care. I will expose her true character before everybody. You belong to me. You have no right to be here and she knows it. Let her do it then. Let her ring the bell if she dares. Let us see how this pure and virtuous creature will face the scandal of what I will declare of her. Let us see how you will face it. I have nothing to lose. You have boasted of your conquest, you poor, pitiful, vain creature. I am the common talk of your acquaintances and hers. I have calculated my advantage, you see. I'm a most unhappy and injured woman, but I'm not the fool you take me to be. So I'm gonna stay. Um, Miss Tranfield, there's the bell. Why don't you go ring it? Thought so. Thank you. Next, I will be performing the song Burn in the character Eliza from the musical Hamilton. I saved every letter you wrote to me. From the moments how I read them, I knew you were mine. You said you were mine, thought you were mine. Do you know what Angelic said when we saw you first made to arrive? She said, be careful with that one now. 
He will do what it takes to survive You and your words flooded my senses Your sentences left me defenseless You built new palaces out of paragraphs You built cathedrals I'm rereading the letters you wrote to me I'm searching and scanning for answers in every line For some kind of sign And when you were mine The world seemed to go You published the letter she wrote to you you told the whole world how you brought this girl into our bed In clearing your name, you have ruined our lives Do you know what Angelica said? When she read what you done, she said You have married an Icarus he has flown too close to the sun You and your words obsessed with your legacy Your sentences border on senseless And you are paranoid in every paragraph How they perceive you How her eyes reacted when you broke her heart You have torn it all apart, I'm watching it burn Watching it burn The world has no right to my heart the world has no place in our bed They don't get to know what I said I'm burning the memories Burning the letters that might have redeemed you You forfeit all rights to my heart You forfeit the place in our bed You'll sleep in your office instead With only the memories of when you were mine Monsters, that's what we call them Abusers, but really just losers Man with no drive, man with no purpose Making us feel worthless But maybe this is a sign Telling me it's my time To get up and fight No other way is gonna be right Take you back home FLs and betas from Rome Rally the truth, baby And take you back home I miss my baby, I miss my home Wish I could see you again once more I want to make the world burn For causing me all of this yearning If I don't survive Would you probably still alive? No 
that I tried, know that I tried to take you back home. Ever was a bit of wrong, rally the truth, take, take you back home.